Good morning. The hour of convening has arrived in the General Assembly and as prescribed by the Constitution of the great state of Georgia, the Senate will now come to order. I'd like to welcome everybody back to our beautiful chamber. Thank you for being with us today as we, as we look to kick off another productive session. This time I'd ask that all unauthorized persons exit our chamber. All unauthorized persons, please exit the floor of the chamber. All senators who have bills and resolutions, please bring them to the secretary's desk at this time. Mr. Secretary, first reading of Senate bills and resolutions, please. Senate Bill 316 by Senators Anna Vitarte of the 31st and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 7 of Chapter 5 of Title 16 of the OCGA related to stalking so as to provide that a person... Judiciary. Senate Bill 317 by Senator Huff Stetler of the 52nd, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 34 of Title 43 of the OCGA relating to physicians, assistants, and others so as to authorize physicians... Health and Human Services. Senate Bill 319 by Senators Anna Vitarte of the 31st and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 3 of Title 12 of the OCGA relating to general provisions regarding parks, historic areas, memorials. Judiciary. Senate Bill 320 by Senator Anna Vitarte of the 31st, a bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 1562 of the OCGA relating to the number of judges of superior court so as to provide for an additional judge of the superior court of the Tallapalooza Judicial Judiciary. Senate Resolution 345 by Senator Hatchett of the 50th, a resolution supporting the renaming of the short line trail to the bill and Dusty McKay Trail and for other purposes. Natural Resources. Senate Resolution 355 by Senators Rahman of the 5th and others, a resolution celebrating the quadrilateral cooperation between Australia, India, Japan, and the United States in their shared vision Rules. for the free. That completes the order, Mr. President. First reading of uh, reference of House bills and resolutions, please. House Bill 782 by Representatives Mallow of the 163rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act creating the Chatham Area Transit Authority approved March 28, 1986. State and local government. That completes the order, Mr. President. All right, it's now time for a morning roll call. It is now time for a morning roll call. The chair recognizes the majority leader. I ask for unanimous consent that we dispense with the morning roll call. The majority leader has asked for unanimous consent that the roll call be dispensed with. Is there objection? The chair hears none, and the morning roll call is dispensed with. All right, it's now time for a morning devotional. It's now time for our morning devotional, and I'd ask that all senators please take your seats. Cease all audible conversations. Doorkeepers, please secure the chamber at this time. If you would, please rise and pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the Georgia flag. I pledge allegiance to the Georgia flag for which it stands, wisdom, justice, moderation. Well, thank you, and it's great to see everybody here today. It feels a little bit odd. Normally, I'm introducing one of you to introduce the chaplain of the day, but it's my honor to, to be able to host my hometown pastor, Adam Johnson, to be our chaplain of the day. And uh, Adam uh, is at Brownsbridge Community Church, which is a part of the North Point family, and has certainly been a big part of my 
uh, wife and I's story and our entire family. Uh, Adam was born and raised here in the metro area and grew up in the Gwinnett County School System uh, at Brookwood High School. And then uh, he later attended the University of Georgia. More on that later. Uh, Adam was, uh, in 2016, he completed his master's degree in biblical studies at the Dallas Theological Seminary and for the last five years has been our lead pastor at Brownsbridge Community Church in Forsyth County. His wife Kelly's with us and two of his sons, Rylan and Roddy, are with us, uh, twin 12-year-old boys, uh, active in Forsyth County. Um, but here, here, here's the main reason why Adam's here. I want to I make sure that we, we understand there was an intent to this today. Adam not only is a pastor, but he played football at the University of Georgia. And I don't know what that means, but I think there's something there divine, and I wanted to make sure that, that we, we, we brought Adam in. Adam was, was fortunate enough to play on the UGA football team uh, as a preferred walk-on in 2001 and uh, had a series of accolades being in, in the scout player of the year, team player of the year in, in 2001, and a number of accolades, and played on some great football teams. So it's my great honor to, to bring forward today to deliver our message, Adam Johnson. Thank you, Jeff. Um, says a lot about our church that uh, a bulldog and a yellow jacket could get along so well, I guess. So very, very grateful to be here today. I want to thank David Cook as well and uh, for the invitation. And uh, also, as a lifelong Georgia resident, I'd love to thank each of you for your service to our community. And um, the families you represent, the communities you represent, thank you. Um, I'm forever grateful uh, as a multi-generational uh, Georgian and uh, raising boys that will also call Georgia home their entire life as well. So um, it's a good day to be a dog, isn't it? Any dog fans in the house today? A few of you? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thinking about tonight, one of, one of the interesting things that will happen is up in Indianapolis, you'll have two people. Um, sitting next to each other, and uh, they will have everything in common in life, just about everything in life. The only thing that will be different is the color of their t-shirt and the name of the team on their t-shirt. And even though they have so much in common, they will treat each other in a hateful way, a hurtful way, um, and you could put a lot of different adjectives on that. And it won't just happen uh, between two people, it'll happen between a lot of people tonight in Indy and in bars and restaurants around the country and on social media, um, at, the, uh, at the water cooler, in the offices this week. And um, it's a really interesting dynamic and, and it's actually, uh, it speaks to, it's an example of what psychologists call the moral circle. Uh, it's the term that they've given to this invisible line that we draw around the people who we would say are our kind. They are our people. And what's interesting is the people that are inside that invisible circle, the moral circle, they get an entirely different set of behaviors from us. They get an entirely different type of treatment and a different set of standards than do people who are on the other side of the moral circle, who are outside our moral circle. Here's another way to think about this. Um, anybody in here, you've ever waited tables? That's ever been your job? Yeah, okay, so you know what misery that can be. <laughs> Uh, I, too, have waited tables, and uh, just imagine that someone you know, someone you love, maybe your son, maybe your daughter, maybe a brother or sister, is going to start waiting tables, and uh, so you decide, you know what, we're, we're going to show up the first night and, and just surprise them. I mean, they've been through the training, they've shadowed, they're finally going to have their own section, and you show up that night with a few friends, and you get seated in their section, and, you know, it takes a few minutes for them to come over and, uh, and get your drink order, but you, you're, not, you're not worried about it. What do, you, what, do you, what do you tell them? They, they come to the table, they're sweating bullets, they're really nervous, you can tell they're overwhelmed, and what do you say to them? You say, hey, we're fine. Don't worry about us, we're good. We, we, don't, we don't need water, we don't need anything to drink, we don't need anything to eat, we just came here to see you, we're good. You take care of those other tables, we'll be fine. Later in the night, you order steak, and in front of you sits cod. You think to yourself, okay, uh, I'll just eat cod. Cod's great. You know, in fact, I probably need more fish in my life. Cod's great. I'm, we're going to do this. This is awesome. We just, we love being here. And, you know, as the night goes on, they continues to be things that are forgotten, but you don't care, again, because this is someone you know. This is someone you love. And, and then at the end of the night, the bill comes, and what do you do? You over-tip them, don't you? You over-tip them. Now, imagine the same exact scenario 
except you have no idea who this person is. They come over to your table and, uh, you know, you ordered Coke Zero, but this tastes like Diet Coke, so all of a sudden you, you stop making eye contact with the person. And, you know, any, any little delay begins to infringe on the good time you were going to have with the people at the table. And as the night goes on, you're doing the mental math of the tip going down and down and down. Two different types of behavior for two different people. One of them is inside of your moral circle. One of them is outside your moral circle. One of them is your son. One of them is your daughter. One of them is your brother, your sister. But the other one is someone's daughter, someone's son, someone's brother, someone's sister. This is an example of how we treat people differently who are inside our moral circle versus those that are outside. As we begin a new year and as you begin a new session in the Senate today, I just want to challenge each of you to expand your moral circle. If you're a follower of Jesus in the room today, um, he really set the example for us. In the Gospel of Matthew, he says this. He says, you've heard it said, meaning this was a common teaching in those days and it's a common teaching even today. You've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Love your neighbor, hate your enemy. He's talking about this dynamic, this tendency that all of us have to show kindness to our kind, but treat people that are different from us in an entirely different way. You've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Now, this would be taking the moral circle to the ultimate, where it includes everyone. And I don't know if that's possible for us in here as humans. But my challenge to you, again, as we bring in a new year, as we bring in a new session today, would be to expand your circle. We're not going to be able to fully live out what Jesus is asking us to do, but maybe we can just expand it a little bit and imagine the difference that would make in our communities, in our counties, in our state, and in our world. Let's expand our moral circles. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for life today. We know it comes from you, uh, the breath in our lungs, um, the strength in our bodies. Uh, We give you thanks today. Thank you um, for the model of Jesus um, that we can follow who teaches us to love our enemies, um, the people that seem to be against us. We actually can treat them in a different way, and I pray that each of us in here would find ways to expand our moral circle this year. God, thank you for the people in this room, the time, effort, and energy that they pour into making our state better, making our communities better, and I pray that you would give them wisdom and discernment as they lead. We're grateful in Jesus' name. Amen.
All right, the Senate will come back to order. The Senate will come back to order. Senate will come back to order. I, I want to take a quick moment. I, I just can't help but notice this magnanimous smile coming from the senator from the 35th and some additional hardware that seems to be on one of your fingers over there. Congratulations, Senator. All right, we're going to take up some important matters that uh, definitely are going to be worthy of paying attention to. If we could come back to order, take our seats, and begin, begin our day. Mr. Secretary, will you please read a resolution? Senate Resolution Number 361 by Miller of the 49th and others. A resolution to notify the House of Representatives that the Senate has convened and for other purposes. The question's on the adoption of the resolution. Is there objection to adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none, and the resolution is adopted. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, will you please read another resolution? Senate Resolution 362, a resolution by Senator Miller of the 49th and others, a resolution to notify the governor that the General Assembly has convened and for other purposes. The question's on the adoption of the resolution. Is there objection to adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none, and the resolution is adopted. This time, I'd like to appoint the following senators as a committee of notification to notify the governor that the General Assembly has convened. The senator from the 49th, the senator from the 30th, the senator from the 55th, and the senator from the 15th. I'd ask that all members of the committee meet at the secretaries of the Senate's desk immediately upon adjournment. Ms. Secretary, will you please read the message from the House of Representatives? House Resolution 570, a resolution by Representative Burns of the 159th, a resolution relative to meetings and adjournments of the General Assembly and for other purposes. Ms. Secretary, will you please read a resolution? House Resolution 568, a resolution by Representative Burns of the 159th, a resolution to notify the Senate that the House of Representatives has convened and for other purposes. Ms. Secretary, please read another resolution. House Resolution 569 by Representative Burns of the 159th, a resolution calling a joint session of the House of Representatives and the Senate for purposes of hearing a message from the governor inviting the justices of the, of the Supreme Court and the judges of the Court of Appeals to be present at the joint session and for other purposes. Be it resolved by the General Assembly of Georgia that His Excellency Br Governor Brian Kemp is hereby invited to address a joint session of the House of Representatives and the Senate at 11 a.m. Thursday, January 13th, 2022, in the Hall of the House of Representatives. Be it further resolved that a joint session of the House of Representatives and the Senate be held in the Hall of the House of Representatives at 10.45 a.m. on the foresaid date for the purposes of hearing an address from His Excellency the Governor. That completes the order, Mr. President. The question is on the adoption of the resolution. Is there objection to adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none, and the resolution is adopted. At this time, I'd like to appoint the following senators to serve as a committee of escort to escort the governor to the joint session of the State of the State Address. Senators from the 49th, 30th, 55th, 45th, 50th, 8th, and 15th. Mr. Secretary, can you please read another resolution? 
House Resolution 570, a resolution by Representative Burns of the 159th, a resolution relative to meetings and adjournments of the General Assembly and for other purposes. That completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the majority leader to speak to the resolution. Good morning and welcome back. If you look on your desk, you see the uh, pink House Resolution 570. This is just the uh, first iteration of the adjournment resolution. So we will be in today. Uh, expect to be here to about 1230 or so tonight. Um, be off tomorrow. I figure I'm going to keep throwing these things in there to see who's actually listening to me out there. Then we'll be back in Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Remember, uh, Monday is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, so we are not in, obviously. Next week is, is Budget Week, and then we are in Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of the following week, at which time you will have a further continuance of the adjournment resolution. Subject to your questions. You have no questions. I yield the well. Does any other senator wish to speak to the resolution? The chair sees none. The question is on the adoption of the resolution. All those in favor of the resolution vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the adoption of the resolution, the yeas are 36 and nays are zero, and this resolution has been adopted. Are there any unanimous consents? The chair sees none. Does any senator wish to rise on a point of personal privilege? The chair sees none. Are there any motions to withdraw and commit? The chair sees none. You have a consent calendar of privileged resolutions before you. Does any senator wish to remove a resolution from the consent calendar? Is there objection to the adoption of the resolutions on the consent calendar? The chair hears none, and the resolutions on the consent calendar are adopted. We're on a roll today. We are now moving on to the Senate calendar. The chair recognizes the majority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask for unanimous consent that all bills and resolutions which were placed on the table during the 2021 legislative session be taken from the table. Senator from the 30th has moved that the bills and resolutions that were placed on the table during the 2021 legislative session and appear on the calendar of tabled bills be removed from the table. Is there objection? Chair hears none, and the bills and resolutions on the calendar of tabled bills are removed from the table. Chair recognizes the majority leader for an additional motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I also ask for unanimous consent that all general bills and all resolutions on the Senate calendar be committed to the committees from which they were last reported. The majority leader has moved that the bills and resolutions appearing on the Senate calendar be committed to the committee from which they were last reported. Is there objection? The chair hears none, and all bills and resolutions appearing on today's calendar are committed to the committee from which they were last reported. The chair again recognizes the majority leader for an additional motion. Mr. Pre President, sorry, getting ahead of myself here. I move that the Senate stand adjourned until 10 a.m. on Wednesday, 12 January 2022. Mr. Secretary, will you please read your announcements?
All committee meetings have been canceled for today. for today and tomorrow. That completes the order, Mr. President. That's the best news we've all heard. Getting off to a good start. Chair recognizes the pro tem for an announcement. Mr. President, isn't it true that being in the chamber today is a little bit like arriving in heaven? You're surprised who's there and who's not there? <laughs> I was worried where you were going with that. <laughs> Any other senator have another brilliant announcement? Just state that in the form of a, of a parliamentary inquiry. Is it not true that the dogs are going to win tonight? The Majority Leader has moved that the Senate stand adjourned until Wednesday, January 12th, 2022 at 10 a.m. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. no. Once again, the ayes have it, and the Senate stands adjourned.